My name is Ernest Pierre Louis. I am the interim director of the Young Alumni Board, and I currently work for School and Affairs Office at the Cook Campus, uh, and I'll be your moderator. And I would like for the other panelists to take a few minutes to introduce themselves as well. Starting with Vanessa. Hi, hello everybody. My name is Vanessa Alisea Achuki. I am president of the Architecture Alumni. I uh, graduated um, from the Spitzer School of Architecture in 2005. And um, I was working for a professor um, at the school actually uh, in an architecture firm in Harlem. Um, and I worked there for two years. And then after that, I was practicing in a, in a larger architecture firm for about 11 years. And most recently I have branched out on my own and started my own practice, but I'm also back in graduate school. So I'm doing now my master's in urban policy and leadership 15 years after graduation. Denise. Great, um, that's awesome, Vanessa. <laughs> Congrats on uh, that journey. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Denise Mendez. Um, I uh, graduated from the Grove School of Engineering um, with my bachelor's degree in civil engineering in 2012. Uh, and I uh, am currently the president for the Engineering School of Alumni, a way to give back to CCNY. So, you know, just, you know, whatever we start here continues to stay here. Um, after um, graduating um, from City College, I went to the University of Texas at Austin to do my master's degree, um, also in civil engineering. Uh, and then after that, uh, I uh, returned to New York, um, to New York City, and I started working and practicing um, at the New York City Department of Transportation, more of the public sector, and I've been there since. So it's about a little over seven years, um, you know, in that role. Um, in, in that space at DOT, and I've certainly uh, had some progressive leadership roles since then. Um, so a different path, but also a plausible path. Um, so I'll hand it back to you, Ernest. And last but not least, I'd like Fahim to introduce himself. Yeah, hi. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Fahim Nawaz, and um, I graduated from City College of New York, uh, particularly Grove School of Engineering, uh, like Denise, uh, in 2015. And after that, um, I started working for Naval Air Systems Command, uh, which is part of the U.S. Navy, as a civilian. Uh, my position is an electronics engineer. And uh, as soon as I started there, they uh, had a, this great program. It's basically this two and a half year leadership program. And, um, you know, to the audience, um, you know, when you're looking for internships and jobs, um, a lot of companies and government organizations, they offer this kind of leadership programs for recent graduates. So I highly encourage you to be part of that. Uh, it, helps you, um, you know, both personally, academically. Uh, they paid for my uh, master's degree. I recently completed master's in uh, systems engineering uh, from Stevens Institute of Technology. And uh, ha about half of the classes, the professors actually came on base, uh, na naval base, and taught us over there. And uh, rest, the rest of the classes, I had to go to on campus and take the classes there. So, um, you know, this is one of the route um, that I took similar to uh, Vanessa and Denise uh, getting a master's degree and it's very helpful, um, you know, climbing up the ladder. Uh, I recently got a promotion as well because of this master's degree. And, um, you know, at the same time, I also did two other graduate certificate programs, one through the same university, Stevens Institute of Technology. And I also did one from MIT as well. And um, uh, the job paid for it actually. So um, I highly encourage uh, everyone to look for, you know, any kind of uh, leadership programs. Uh, they, you know, some companies they offer a year and a half, two years, three years. And basically what this program does is they give you a uh, rotational opportunity. So instead of working, in uh, one particular job assignment, uh, every six months or every year, you rotate to different departments and learn about different things. Um, and it helps you um, 
learn about various different disciplines within that organization, uh, which is uh, definitely helpful um, in, in the long run. Thank you, Fahim. And thank the panelists are so great and so prepared. They already answered one question that we had on the list of questions, which was, which is, should I continue my higher education journey? Uh, it seems like all the, all the panelists have a master's degree, so I would assume that you guys would recommend at some point to pursue uh, a further degree past your bachelor's. Uh, and if anyone would like to chime in on that. Um, uh, do you want to go first, Vanessa? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> I think I, I would certainly say that it's important to assess kind of what your longer term goals are and like how do how do you really um, think about um, really approaching or getting there because um, there's certainly so many so many different paths to doing that. Um, so I, I also just want to be cautious about like being too prescriptive about what everyone should be doing. Um, it worked out for me. It worked out for folks on the call um, and the order in which you do that is also very different right um so for me i felt like i wanted to kind of get a little bit more education um and kind of bolster up my technical abilities before going into the workforce um it is certainly important and helpful i think getting uh, a, a graduate degree um, in whichever field you choose um, because it adds that additional level of complexity what i have been seeing um, is that people are doing a little bit more of a horizontal approach rather than a vertical approach. So they try to have more of a multidisciplinary type of background because a lot of uh, jobs in, this, in these industries are actually um, looking for so many different skill sets and or the intersection of certain skill sets. So um, that's one of the things that I've actually noticed. And I'm actually considering thinking, uh, you know, maybe going back for another degree, but a non-engineering degree, because I recognize now that there are other skill sets that I would probably want to hone in on um, at, at the different leadership roles. So it's a long answer, but <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's a nuanced one because it really depends. I'll hand it over to the other panelists as well. Um, so I, I, I'd like to chime in on this one, um, mainly because it was a, a difficult decision for me to um, decide to go back to graduate school. It was always something that I had wanted to do, but I didn't know exactly which degree I wanted to pursue because my interests were not aligned with just one thing. Um, and so specifically for me, I'm very interested in community-based design, and it's a little bit of a combination of architecture, entrepreneurship, um, community, community design, urban planning, um, but all in all, I think um, the pro I'm going to Hunter right now for urban policy and leadership. Um, it has the, you have the ability to sort of focus your, um, your concentration, so I'm going to be focusing on neighborhood development. Um, which was great. And I think it, it gave me the, the most comprehensive of what I wanted to get out of the program, right? Um, I also got into Pratt for a design management degree, which is sort of like an MBA for, for design. Um, and it was a really great program, but very, very expensive um, and very prescriptive in that there was, you have to take the course, like curriculum was like, you have to take these classes. You didn't have the option to really customize it as you wanted. Um, and that wasn't something that was really um, something that I was interested in. Um, and so I think for me, I did not want to graduate graduate school with debt, right? So I'm paying for this as I go. Um, and that was really a priority for me. I think it depends on which field you're entering into. You know, some salaries, um, if you go to graduate school, you have the, the salary when you come out will allow you to pay that debt real quick. Um, others, like architecture, uh, it will take you a long time to pay that off. So I think those are things to, to think about. Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, I agree with uh, Vanessa, Denise, and just wanted to add uh, a little more into it. So for example, for myself, after graduating with electrical engineering, um, obviously I knew that I wanted to get a higher education, but I did not know exactly in which field. Uh, did I really wanna do in the same major that I did or uh, do I wanna 
do something in business. Uh, so what I did was basically went to, you know, work, uh, basically get a job and try to see, you know, what I really like. And uh, for the students out here, um, my recommendation would be to see what you really like doing. And oftentimes uh, the company that you work for, uh, sometimes they pay for the entire degree or sometimes they pay for 50%. So you don't have to pay out of pocket or, or come out with, with, with debt. So that's like one option. But most importantly, as you're working, you can kind of figure out what you really want to do. Personally, I didn't want to, major in the same field that I uh, did for my bachelor's. So that's why I went ahead and did something a little different uh, and uh, get a different set of skill sets like what uh, Denise uh, mentioned earlier. Thank you, everybody. And as you guys were answering the question, everyone mentioned that there were, there were some tough decisions, there were some planning that had to be done. Uh, what do you guys think was the hardest decision you had to make after college? After obtaining your after obtaining your bachelor's, what was the tough decision? And anyone can 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 tackle this question first. That was a really, that's a really difficult question. I will try to go um, and share kind of my thoughts. Um, I think it was difficult for for me to decide whether or not I had enough experience kind of coming out of, um, you know, undergrad and going directly to work in, 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 in the uh, public sector or private sector. Um, and ultimately, I decided to, to, to go to, to grad school. But I think um, I think the more challenging part was um, I had initially wanted to do my doctorate and, you know, I really had to ask myself, well, well what's really driving that decision? Um, so, so for me, I think that was like the hardest part, um, continuing on beyond my master's and then thinking about transitioning back to the workforce. Um, outside of that, I think personally, you have to learn how to manage your time and, um, really think about how you're transitioning from kind of a student mindset to a professional um, and, and, and kind of honing in on those skills as you move forward. So um, maybe a combination of things. <laughs> Anyone else like to chime in? Yeah, so uh, just to add on to that, my, uh, the toughest decision was uh, the location. Um, you know, growing up in New York City, you know, spending most of my life in New York City uh, and being in City College, basically, um, I didn't really want to move out of New York. So when, when I was looking for a job, uh, you know, the location was my first priority. And I don't know about the times right now, how the job fairs and those um, recruiting events are taking place right now with this pandemic, but during when I graduated, a lot of the companies, they, uh, they came on campus and recruited, and that's how I uh, was able to get the job, basically. And uh, after graduation, had few job offers, both in the private sector and the, and the government. And the toughest decision was, one, location, and two, um, did I really want to work for a private company versus a, a government, government job? And the way I made the decision is what I really like doing. So to me personally, salary uh, doesn't play, I mean, it does play into a role, but not so much. Uh, what matters to me is, do I re am I going to be uh, enjoying uh, doing what I do? Because ultimately, you're spending uh, more than 40 hours or at least 40 hours a week doing uh, what you do. So uh, make sure you like uh, what you're getting into. And um, for me, I think that it was making the decision to leave the firm I was at, because um, I was working while I was in school. It was for a professor, it was a small firm. And it was sort of making the decision that if I want, you know, I've learned everything I can learn here. So I, it's time for me to move on. Um, and making that decision, I had two offers. I only had really two places I wanted to work. I got two offers from those two places. 
And one offer was a really, really great package, but I would be working um, only on interiors. Um, nothing wrong with interiors. Um, and then the other one was a less, like less benefits um, and a lower salary, but I would be working on, at this time it was um, the Princeton, uh, Princeton Tennis Center. So um, it was a small, small new building, right? Um, and to be an architect, you need to have experience um, in certain settings. And one of those is in, is in new buildings, right? So for me to be able to achieve licensure, which is one of, was one of my like more immediate goals, I needed to get that experience of being able to sort of like work on a project from beginning to end. Um, and so what I ended up doing was um, sort of calling them or emailing them back and saying, look, I really want to work here, um, but I got a better offer at this other place. And is there, is it possible to sort of match it? They matched, they, they actually came back and they matched the offer. Um, and uh, I, I got the job and I was there for 11 years. And then the second hardest decision was deciding to leave. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, do you mind if I share well, some of the? Yeah. yeah, I think Vanessa. One of the things that you highlighted, I think, I think really um, brings to bear like kind of the decisions about like when to leave and and when it's time to transition. Um, and that's something for me. It's a little bit different because I've worked at the same agency since I've graduated uh, from. Um, from college and then grad school. Um, and I've certainly had moments of time where I was like, well, maybe it's time to transition to another company or another for a change of environment. Um, and ultimately I ended up applying to another job within the same agency. Um, so, you know, it, it's definitely um, important for you to continue to assess kind of where your longer term goals are, where are you within that career journey and that mapping and what still makes sense for you. Um, whether you stay within a specific agency or company or decide to transition and leave as well. Um, so yeah, always assessing uh, is, uh, is, is a part of the game as well. Thank you guys. And as we wrap up the panel, I would ask, like to ask you guys one last question. Uh, what's the advice you wish you had received right after graduation? that would have made your life a whole lot easier in the long run. I got this one. Uh, I'll start. Um, negotiate your entry level salary. Negotiate it higher um, and um, always sort of really think about um, what you're worth, right? And and that there's other other things that you can negotiate within your salary package. If it's that they can't give you more money, maybe they can give you more time. Um, in my case, I was very active with um, uh, architectural organization, the AIA, um, and they, you know, I I was able to get a lot of sort of professional development time as part of my um, package. This is sort of paid time off right, to be able to attend conferences and, and meetings and things like that. Um, but being able to understand that you can negotiate um, and that, you know, you're hiring them as much as they're hiring you in a way um, is, is, is a good, good thing. I would like to mention on that point that typically, because I work with hiring here at City College sometimes, typically with the salary that's posted is the lowest end offer. And there's usually at least five to ten thousand dollars on the table. So if you if you see a salary, don't be afraid to go up five to ten thousand dollars. Usually that money's there because they plan for they plan for you to negotiate. 